This barbecue chicken mac and cheese is perfect for those looking to bulk. It's packed with protein, a little bit higher on the calories. But you don't even have to worry about that if you just wanna make a simple meal that's going to make your life easier. Let's jump straight in. Starting this off, we're going to place a large pot of water onto our stovetop, whack this over a high heat, and then just let this come to a boil in the background. Now for the prep, we're going to need 1.2 kilos of boneless and skinless chicken thigh. With these, slice them lengthways into strips. Try and keep them nice and thin and consistent, of course. Once you have that done, rotate them 90 degrees, and then we're going to dice these into small to medium-sized pieces. Obviously, the larger they are, the longer they're going to take to cook. And of course, we wanna make them as consistent as possible. That way, they'll all cook at the same rate. What I have here is 140 grams of cheddar cheese. You can also use Gruyere or Gouda or any good melting cheese of your choice. Grate this on the largest side of a box grater just until you have something that looks like this. Last but not least, we're going to need two grams of flat leaf parsley. This is completely optional. It's only going to be used as a garnish. Scrunch it up and then roughly chop, making sure that there's no large leaves or stems. With it all done, we have a nice, fine flat leaf parsley looking like this. With that prep done, add the chicken into a large mixing bowl. Add in one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of dried thyme, one teaspoon of dried oregano or oregano, and then about half a teaspoon of chili flakes. Add in two teaspoons of olive oil. Then we can hit it up with a little bit of salt. And of course, some cracked black pepper, 20 cracks worth. Let's then get in there with clean hands and start mixing this all together. Just to make sure everything's evenly combined. Everything is covered in that seasoning. What you should have, something that looks like this. Going back to our water, it's now at a boil. Just generously season it with salt. Doesn't need to be ocean water though. Add in 400 grams of macaroni. Give it a quick mix around just so it doesn't stick all together. Then with this, we're just going to cook this for one minute less than the packet instructions. Now for the chicken, place a large pan onto your stovetop, whack it over a high heat and then get this nice and hot. Add in two teaspoons of olive oil and then add in all of that chicken. Make sure you scrape the bowl, getting any of those remaining spices in there as well. Spread it out so it's not sitting on top of one another. And if you don't have a large pan, I do recommend doing this in batches because you're only going to boil the chicken. Once you have it spread out, let it sit for two minutes to form a crust, then start mixing it through. We don't need to play with this too much because otherwise it will just take too much heat out of the pan. And regardless of how much you've added in there, it will start to boil. But we're going to cook this for a total of about four and a half minutes until that chicken is just cooked through. Add in half a cup or 125 milliliters of your favorite barbecue sauce. I do recommend using reduced sugar only due to the fact that this is trying to be a little bit healthier, but go for it, use whatever you like. Mix it all through and we're going to cook this for about one minute now just to get that glaze all over the chicken. And if you don't want to use barbecue sauce, you can use any of your favorite hot sauces as well. But you should have something that looks like this that we can then remove from the pan. And this right here is the macros for the barbecue chicken alone, as well as the serving size. Let's then place that pan back over a medium high heat. Don't need to wipe it out because the flavor in there is going to increase the flavor of what we're making now. Add 400 milliliters of reduced fat cream or milk, 100 grams of low fat cream cheese, the grated cheddar, gruyere or gouda that we did at the beginning, then season to taste with salt as well as cracked black pepper. 15. Mix all of that together. What we're focusing on right now is breaking up that cream cheese and allowing both cheeses to melt thoroughly through that sauce. Once it comes to a simmer, reduce the heat to medium, otherwise we'll end up reducing it too far and it will just become a gloopy mess. And a couple of optional ingredients you can add in is one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, as well as one teaspoon of smoked paprika. Like I said, they're completely optional. Mix all of that through if you've decided to add them. And we're going to cook this for about two to three minutes until the sauce has thickened. When you're happy with the consistency of the sauce, we can add in our drained and cooked pasta. Remember, it's been cooked for one minute less than the packet instructions. Keep this over a medium heat and then just mix everything through until that pasta is completely coated in that cheese sauce. This right here is the macros for the mac and cheese alone, and you can stop it and keep the two separate, or you can do what I'm about to do and add that barbecue chicken into that mac and cheese. It's absolutely fantastic like this, by the way. I do recommend you doing it, but you can keep them separate. That's completely fine. If you have decided to add the barbecue chicken in, make sure you mix everything thoroughly. Make sure all of those flavors have become friends and that barbecue sauce is completely spread throughout. We don't need to cook it for long, about 30 seconds, and then it can be removed from the stovetop. Portion these into our containers using the weights on the macro cards. Garnish it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese, flat leaf parsley, and cracked black pepper. And what we've made is this barbecue chicken mac and cheese meal prep. It smells and looks incredible. Last but not least, this right here is the macro card for everything combined, including the total serving size. 
Now storing these is nice and simple. Let them cool down for about 15 to 20 minutes, then place on the lids. They'll last three to four days in the fridge and about three months in the freezer. If they're frozen, allow them to thaw overnight in the fridge before trying to reheat because you'll end up with just this real dry mess and it won't be nice at all. And when it does come to reheating, microwave or a pan is your best option. Obviously microwaves are really suitable, especially if you're taking it out of the house. Can also be eaten cold as well. But either way you do it, add a splash of water or stock just to rehydrate everything. As always though, there's one thing left to do and that's of course, we can then dig in. For something as simple as this, this is absolutely delicious. There's so much flavor going on, but it's not overpowering like some mac and cheese recipes. The barbecue sauce really does stand out as well with that smokiness, as well as the smokiness being added by the smoked paprika. Just a really well-balanced meal, and I highly recommend you try it because it is absolutely delicious. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider subscribing, it's free, so why not? And leave a comment for the algorithm. All of that really does help me out. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.